Himmler's new SS Paranormal Division was first spotted here about a week ago. Helga von Bülow. Return to Castle Wolfenstein for the Xbox is uh, roughly the same as the PC version. You know, pretty much all the single player stuff and multiplayer stuff that made the PC version a hit have come over to the Xbox version. But there's also been a handful of additions. For starters, the single player has a new prologue. It's a series of levels at the front of the game that kind of set up the action a little better than the PC version had. Also, there's a cooperative mode, uh, and this can be played offline in a two-player split screen. Unfortunately, this isn't as fleshed out as you would like, uh, that you can actually save your game in cooperative mode, and you can only really select from levels that you've already unlocked playing in the single-player campaign. The single-player mode in the game is actually uh, pretty standard. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot to see here. You're basically B.J. Blaskowitz, the hero from the first Wolfenstein game, running through corridors, running through tombs, running through you know, all sorts of different environments, shooting up a bunch of Nazis, shooting up a bunch of zombies, and uh, really uh, doing your thing as quickly as you possibly can. The AI is probably the strongest point about the single player, uh, but even that's not really uh, earth-shattering AI. It's nothing you really haven't seen before. The, the Nazis will kind of duck and cover. They'll pop up and shoot and then get back behind cover. And uh, the, the zombies, like any good zombies, just kind of lumber at you, trying to get you. Which, uh, you know, what more can you ask from zombies these days anyway? The game's Xbox Live support is truly where the game really picks up steam. The game can be played by up to 16 players and has basically all the same Xbox Live configuration and uh, online player matching stuff that you'd expect. You can do your opt match, you can do your quick match, you can uh, look at a lot of extensive stats, uh, which is a really nice feature because it keeps track of a lot of different stuff, including uh, weekly, monthly, and overall stats. You can even look at how long a player has played as each one of the game's four character classes. The multiplayer in Return to Castle Wolfenstein is uh, basically an objective-based team game. Uh, you pick Axis or Allies, and depending on the map, you'll have different objectives that you'll want to complete. Some of these objectives range from uh, you know, collecting war documents and getting them to a radio to transmit them out. Uh, in some cases, you'll have to defend an Axis submarine. So there's kind of a, a little bit of variety here. And that variety lets you play as a, a variety of character classes and kind of in a, a variety of different roles as you're either defending or attacking and things of that nature. The main problem with multiplayer is, uh, is a fairly minor one and one that you'll definitely uh, get over in time. And that's uh, that the game really isn't very good at telling you what you're supposed to be doing. If you jump into a multiplayer match, you'll have to actually go to a separate menu to look at what the objectives for that map are. But then on top of that, the game doesn't actually show you where the objectives take place. So if you have to defend some war documents or uh, you know, guard a transmitter to prevent the allies from getting in with those documents to transmit, you'll actually have to scout around and find those items yourself before you can uh, really figure out what the heck you're supposed to be doing. Like a flyby mode or something that actually would, uh, would let you kind of offline kind of learn these maps and, and take you through stuff would have been an, a big help here to kind of getting the learning curve out of the way early and uh, getting out of the way very easily. As it stands, you'll have to uh, familiarize yourself with all the maps kind of on the fly uh, in the heat of battle, which is uh, less than optimal, but uh, definitely something you can get over if you give it enough time. The other problem with the game's multiplayer is a technical one, but it's also relatively minor, then you can work around it if you uh, know what you're doing. And uh, that's basically is that uh, there's a lot of bad servers out there. You know, these servers are all being run on someone's DSL or cable connection or something, and those aren't really meant to hold 16 players for the full match. Um, so the, your best bet is to shoot for either uh, lower player limits or to you know, really use the OptiMatch filters to seek out good servers. If you're on a bad server, you'll know it almost immediately because the characters just jump around, get really stuttery, you won't even be able to run properly. Um, so it'll take you a little extra time to really find a good server, but once you do, the game works perfectly. And uh, as a team-based game, it actually makes great use of the Xbox Live headset. Um, you know, there's a lot of aspects of the game that require you to communicate with your teammates to say, you know, I could use a medic over here, or, you know, I could use a lieutenant over here to drop me some more ammo, or, uh, you know, the guys are, you know, trying to plant dynamite by this door, I need some backup. You know, th there's a lot of uh, situations where the voice headset actually comes into, uh, into play very, very heavily, and it works very, very well for that aspect. At the end of the day, Return to Castle Wolfenstein's single-player mode isn't much to write home about, even with its additional levels and enemies. Um, it's a, a functional game that you can play through single player, and, and you know, you'll, there's definitely some enjoyment to be had there, but uh, the multiplayer is really where Return to Castle Wolfenstein earns almost all of its gameplay points. Uh, it's a very well done multiplayer mode uh, with a lot of really well thought out and well designed maps and some great objectives. So if you're willing to take the time to learn how to play on each of these multiplayer maps, and learn what all the objectives are and all that stuff, and to clear these kind of hurdles, you'll definitely have a great time with Return to Castle Wolfenstein for the Xbox.